Welcome everyone. So, in the previous lecture you may recall what we, we had seen various classes of policies. So, the first class of policies that we defined were these deterministic policies and out of that the first one was a Markovian policy. A Markovian policy was one where a, at the decision rule at any time t mapped the state that was at that time t to the actions uh, to the actions at that time t such that at any in any state you always took actions that were available at that state. So, these were Markovian policies. Then we looked at what were called history dependent policies in which the the, the uh, decision rule at, at any time t mapped, this, mapped the history that was known and up until that time t to an action. And uh, the constraint again was that when you looked at the history up until time t that contained the state at time t and therefore, you, you could only map this entire history to an action that was available in that state at time t in the state S t at time t. So, if you have forgotten the history is comprised of all the, the states and the, the sequence of states and actions available that were taken up until time t minus 1 and the state that was the, that was realized at time t. This was the history at time t. So, the history dependent policy mapped this entire vector of uh, states and actions to an action at time t. This was a history dependent deterministic policy and the above was a history dependent Markov policy. Uh, then we looked at what were called randomized policies. In, in a randomized policy the decision rule was uh, not deterministic, but it defined a probability distribution on the set of actions that were available. So, the, uh, the decision uh, randomized Markovian decision rule was one where the decision rule mapped the state at time at, uh, at this the decision rule at time t map the state at time t to a probability distribution on the set of actions uh, uh, on the set of actions and one always had to obviously pick actions from the set set of actions that were available at in, in the state that you are in. So, the probability distribution of uh, the uh, that was induced by this decision rule was denoted by q sub d t. Now, q sub d t is the probability distribution uh, that is uh, this 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 that is uh, that uh, that is this particular mapping to evaluate the actual probability that you get of choosing a particular action you need to input the state s t here. So, it is q sub d t of s t. So, uh, given the state at time t and given the, the, the Markovian decision rule you get a probability distribution here which is of, uh, on the, the actions. So, q of a sub d t of s t. This was a Markovian, Markovian uh, randomized policy or a ra Markovian randomized decision rule. Okay. So, the, uh, so, the, the, uh, so, this gave you a probability distribution on the set of actions. So, it had to be greater than equal to 0 and the sum over all the feasible actions the, the actions available at that state had to be equal to 1. So, naturally all other actions that are not available at uh, in that state are given probability 0. One also had a randomized history dependent decision rule. A, a randomized history dependent decision rule is one where uh, the you map at any time at any time t the history up until time t to a probability distribution on the set of actions available at in the state at time t. So, q a of uh, q, uh, q of a sub d t of h t this to, told you the probability distribution probability of choosing an action a when you have chosen a randomized decision rule d t in and you and the history realized up until time t is h t. This then gave you a probability distribution on the set of actions and it had the earlier the, 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 the constraints as before. Now, uh, we also saw an, an another set of policies which was which is called the set of stationary policies. Stationary policy a policy pi was said to be stationary if, if it is Markov 
and if the decision rule applied at, at every time t is, is actually independent of t. So, pi is said to be stationary if d0 is equal to d, d1 uh, is equal to d2 dot 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 till dn minus 1, then the policy is said to be a, a stationary policy. In general, one uses the word stationary to mean time independent. So, one talks of stationary problems, stationary transition probabilities, stationary costs, all of these uh, or stationary rewards. By this, by this one means really that the uh, these particular terms the, the rewards or the transition probabilities or the overall characteristics of the problem are actually invariant with uh, invariant with time. That means, the, they do not depend on the time instant at which these are evaluated. Then similarly, when we also had a stationary randomized policy, uh, uh, a stationary randomized policy is one in which if we apply a randomized decision rule and one applies the same decision rule at each time. So, you had the same randomized decision rule at each time. This does not mean that you take the same action at each time, it just means that you take the actions with the same probability at each time for the same state. Okay. So, the, the, the it, uh, once you fix a state and you fix and you tell me what the decision rule is and you tell uh, then the probability distribution on the actions does not depend on does not actually depend on time. Okay. So, this this quantity here q uh, q sub d t of s of a this is actually independent of time t. This is this was called a stationary this was called a stationary randomized policy. Now, we finally, uh, took note that anything that any of these policies that are deterministic are special cases of their randomized counterparts. So, a Markov policy is a special case of Markov randomized policies. Therefore, the set of Markov policies is included in the, in the set of Markov randomized policies. The state set of stationary policies is included in the set of stationary randomized policies. The the set of history dependent policies is included in the set of history dependent randomized policies. Right. Now, today what we will do is we will we will get some clarity more clarity about all of these uh, different types of policies by looking at a specific example. Now, in order to calculate in order to work out this example, we need to understand how is it that a randomized policy actually works. So, what exactly when we choose an action at random? what exactly is the cost or the reward that we are going to get and what is going to be the transition that is going to occur with what probabilities are the states going to transition to the to the future states. Let us do this for, for simplicity for a first for a, um, a Markov randomized policy the same can be done also for other history dependent policies as well. Okay. So, let d t of s let d t B a Markov randomized decision rule now uh, let q sub d t of s of a equals equal the probability of choosing action A under decision rule d t in state S. So, what happens then uh, to the reward that one gets? So, what when we choose when we are the way this works is that when we are in state S and we have chosen a randomized decision rule d t, we would end up choosing an action A with this probability, probability given by q of A sub d t of S. With this probability an action is chosen. So, then question becomes what is the reward that we would get? 
because we are not choosing a, any particular action, we are choosing actually uh, an, act, uh, an action with a certain, pro every action with a certain probability. So, what we do is we, def we say that what we are looking for is the expected reward. This is again in the same spirit as uh, expected utility theory, any time there is an uncertainty involved one takes the expe an expectation over, uh, over the rewards or the utility or the cost that is involved over the uncertainty. Right? So, so, what one looks at is then the expected reward. So, the expected reward is reward at time t in state s due to this policy d t. Now, d t remember does not specify any specific action, but we will just simply write this as the expected reward that you get when you apply policy d t in state s. So, this is called this is the expected reward from d t in state s. This is simply taken as the, so this what happens is we have we, we take we in a randomized Markov distribution rule we take actions with a certain probability. So, what we, we say is that we are actually getting the the deterministic reward that we would get from that particular action with a certain probability. So, with a probability being q d t of s of a, where now the summation a is over all the actions. Are, so, the expected reward when you up, when you choose a Markov randomized decision rule d t uh, in in state s is the expectation of r t of s uh, 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 comma a where where the expectation is taken over a and the probability distribution is the probability distribution specified by the Markov decision rule. What then happen? We can ask a similar question about what then happens to the transition probability or the transition uh, the probability of transitioning from one state to the other. So, the state transition probability is equal to once again we write this as probability of transitioning to state j in state s when we choose a decision rule. when we choose a decision rule d t. Okay. Under, under d t, it should be s, under d t in state s. And what is this probability? Well, this is again one takes the expect, expectation of the, of the state transition probabilities that we have for each state and action. So, we choose take this, we have already this state transition probability given to us the p t of uh, j given s comma a. We assume that a now is a random variable chosen with a pro probability distribution q d t of s, uh, q d t of s of a. So, we just multiply this by its probability q d t of s of a and we take the summation of over a in capital a this then is the state transition probability okay so this, so under under uh, a, uh, a, a markov randomized decision rule the expected reward and the transition probabilities are given by these expressions this leads us to a fundamental question in all of markov decision theory which is when does there exist a Markov deterministic policy that 
that is optimal over the set of all policies all you know by all history dependent policies. history dependent randomized policies. So, the taking the most general set of policies which is the history dependent randomized policies uh, and one if one optimizes your one's cost over all by choosing allowing uh, the action to be chosen in a randomized manner with uh, over taking into account all the information in the history when do we still get a Markov policy that is optimal. This is a fundamental question. We are not yet in the stage where we can answer this question. We will answer this in a couple of lectures, uh, but the, remember that this is a question that we are building towards. So, what I want to do next is to actually show you an example in which all of these various types of policies are uh, are, are computed and uh, and are, are, are written out so that it, you get clarity on how exactly are these policies defined. So, in the example that we will consider there is a, a system that ha, that exists in two states ok. The system we have a system that can exist in two states. Now, these states are denoted by S1 and S2 let me write this here S1 and S2 these are the states that it can that it can exist in. Okay. So, note, uh, note that these are not the states at time 1 and time 2 these are actually the two states of that the system can actually exist in. Now, in when the system is in state 1 when state is S1, when the system is in state S1, the decision maker has two choices for actions. Two choices for actions, let us denote these actions as A11 and A12. So, the first index here 1 denotes these denotes that we are actually in state S1 and the second index denotes the the index of the action. So, this is the first action in state 1 this is the second action in state 1. When in when state is is S2 there is only one action. and there is only one action and let us say that action is that action is called A to 1. Now, if one if the if the decision maker if you choose if A 1 1 is chosen in in state S 1 if A 1 1 is chosen in S1 then the then the reward the reward that you get is actually 5 units and and the so one gets a reward uh, the decision maker gets a reward of 5 units and the state state transitions to s2 with probability half with probability half and remains in S1 with probability half. 
So, when one chooses action A11 in, uh, in state, state S1, you get a reward of 5 units and you transition to state S2 with probability half or you remain in state S1 with probability half. Now, if A12 is chosen in S1, so if A12 is chosen in S1, then what happens? Well, then he gets an, a reward of, uh, of 10 units, then he receives a reward of, of 10 units and the state transitions the state transitions to uh, to s2 with probability 1 so with certainty the state transitions to to state s2 now if action a21 is chosen in S2, then, then he receives a reward of, of minus 1. units. So, if A a2 uh, if a21 is chosen in state s2 then the decision maker receives a reward of minus 1 units in other words he incurs a cost of of 1 unit and the state transitions to s2 with probability 1 actually i shouldn't really say transitions or what i really mean is that it remains in S2 with probability 1 right. So, so he, he, this, this action is chosen when you are already in state S2. So, if you choose an action, uh, if you choose action A to 1 in state S2, you get a reward of minus 1 and the state remains in state S2 with probability 1. Now, this is the way we have formulated this problem. I need to also tell you what is uh, uh, the what the time horizon of the problem is. I should I need to also tell you what the what the terminal costs uh, in the problem are. All of these things are yet to be specified. I will I will specify them in a moment. But but I want you to notice before uh, before we move forward to those details. I want you to notice one important th feature of this problem, which is which is that if you look at these these rewards this reward here, this reward here, this reward here. Each of these rewards is actually independent of time. So, the reward that I get when I am in state S1 and I choose an action A11 is equal to 5 regardless of what at regardless of the time at which this, this action was taken and this and uh, the time at which you were in this state. Right? So, regardless of, of, the, of the time instant or the decision epoch at which this is happening, the reward is fixed, the reward is always 5 units. The same is the case here as well, the reward here in, of choosing, uh, choosing action A, A, uh, A12 in state S1 is still, uh, is still uh, 10 units regardless of the time instant at which this choice was being made. This and finally, the same is true here as well. The, the, the reward of choosing for of choosing into uh, out of choosing action A21 in state S2 is independent of, uh, of the time at which this, uh, this choice is being made. The same is also true about the state transitions. The state transitions here uh, use transition from S1 to S2 with probability half regardless of the uh, of the time at which this this uh, these choices are being made this transition is also independent of time and finally this one also is is independent of time when the when this is the case when the uh, when the rewards and the transition probabilities are actually time independent 
it is possible for us to represent this problem in a much cleaner and much more compact form. So, instead of writing out these uh, all of these details uh, you know verbally in such a such a is uh, such a long and tedious manner one can actually just do a quick pictorial representation that captures the all of these elements of the problem so note that this works only when the when the rewards and transition probabilities are stationary in other words they are where so the problem is stationary where so the transition the 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 uh, the rewards are independent of time the transition probabilities are also independent of time in this case we there is a cleaner representation possible this representation we will cover in the next in the next lecture